A fourth reason why I think deer gravitate to these bow ties is because there is usually ample food, at least daytime browsing food, in those locations. Whenever you're in an area where you have a hillside, vegetation has a tendency not to grow quite as well, especially if you're on a north-facing slope. But where the terrain flattens out, you'll notice a higher stem count in those acres and deer are attracted to that, not only because it's food, but also because it's better bedding areas. So oftentimes, if you're in a mountainous area and you're walking through big woods, you'll notice that when you come to this feature, all of a sudden, the big woods disappears and you have a lot of undergrowth. That's what deer like, obviously. So that's part of the reason why they're there. The fact that there is a stream that's going through this area also gives this vegetation a better chance to flourish and survive. Now oftentimes these stream braids that form a V-shape, they actually may not have water in them, except when a heavy rain occurs, or perhaps when you have springtime thaw out from winter, or if there's a spring nearby. But these are not usually gushing streams. In fact, most of them, I couldn't even hear the water flowing. This is in the interior of this bow tie. In fact, right on about what I would call the knot. And there's a little spring that's gurgling out from the side of the mountain. And those can be honey spots for bucks. They just love spring water. Of course, getting in here to actually hunt that undetected, that's the work of a great hunter. If you live in an area where there's been a lot of fracking, oil or gas drilling in any way, you'll notice that this is a blessing and a curse. It creates a lot of roads which can kill bedding areas. But these roads oftentimes end up having clover that sprouts up. And in addition to that, you have these browse areas that are created where the sunlight can hit the trees and help them grow side growth. You just have to adapt. You'll also find wild strawberry in abundance, which deer absolutely love, and a fresh sprouting of seedlings like this oak tree here that hardly stands a chance to make it into a full grown tree, but the deer are enjoying it. And fifthly, these bow tie areas are prime areas for does and bucks to come together during mating season. This is in part because of the general layout, the ease of travel, the ample food and cover that is usually found in this, especially compared to the terrain that is nearby. Because of the thermal and wind action that takes place in these formations, bucks are in an advantage to be able to scent check without having to move very much, and when they smell a hot doe, be able to locate her really quickly. The pair can then find a thickly vegetated area within the bow tie, or go to an adjacent area where there's ample cover, and proceed to procreate. So how do you go about hunting one of these bow ties? Well, the temptation is to just kind of go right into the formation itself and get as close as you can to the deer. The problem is that any adjustment with the wind and you're usually going to be toast. In fact, you may not even need to have an adjustment in the wind from when you originally go in there and you still might get busted. The thermals are that strong. Every single one of these places and one of them I went to, there was no wind, no discernible wind whatsoever. And yet it felt like there was a varying wind the whole time that I was in the bow tie. So I highly recommend that you don't go into that bow tie unless there's a specific buck that you've already done some surveillance work on. You actually know where he's at. You've pinpointed him and you're willing to sneak in perhaps bump a couple of other deer, take that risk, and go in for that one time to see if you can't put 
the entire thing together and come home with a trophy. One really good scenario that you could use is if you can find an isolated white oak or perhaps an apple tree or even some kind of hickory that's dropping nuts or fruit that deer highly seek out and it's just off the edge of the bow tie, that could be a money location to hunt. This is especially true in the early season where deer aren't feeling nearly as pressured and they're much more predictable to get up from their bedding, go to the food source, and back to their bedding again. I'm walking down a trail that's got a lot of recent use. And that's because this area has quite a few mature red oaks. And I guarantee every evening, sometimes even the middle of the day, as they're dropping, the deer are coming into these spots and eating a really high quality meal. Another really high quality percentage hunting location is if you follow one of the stream braids in and you stay near the very top of that stream braid and set yourself up with the wind in your favor on either side of the stream, perhaps even a tree that is right along the stream. You don't mess up very much of the bow tie, just the little bit that's upstream from you. And oftentimes you'll notice that as the stream becomes less, well, the terrain is actually flattening out. And that makes deer want to cross there with more regularity because it's easier for them to travel that route. And so in every one of these formations, there is a high route and it is worn down like a cow path that crosses up near the source of that water. One of the things you wanna start noticing when you're looking at any kind of topo map are the things that you can see before you actually go and scout. This will make you more efficient in your scouting. And unless you've got all kinds of time you don't know what to do with, you probably need to be efficient in your scouting. So one of the things that stands out about this spot, and this is a big woods location, you have really quick elevation change in this area right here. Notice how the contour lines almost form a blob of brown color in here. That means that the elevation switch is really quick. And if you come up here, the contour lines are farther apart. That means that the gradient is much less. So deer are just like us. They're going to travel the path that's most efficient for them. And it's way more important for them than it is for us because they're out in the elements all the time trying to survive. If you go to a building and you can take the elevator 30 stories up or you can take the stairs, most of us are going to take the elevator. It's much easier. Most of us could actually navigate those 30 flights of stairs if we had to, but we're not going to because unless we're doing a workout, it's not as efficient. And so deer really only have two options when it comes to navigating over in this area, which is a prime bedding area on this spur if they want to cross this spur up here to the top and get to some food perhaps that's off to the northeast. They can drop down into the stream in this area, but again, right here, this area is really steep. And so almost all of these deer are going to get up out of their bed if they're in that spot. They're going to travel on either side of the top of this spur. And if they're going to the northeast, it would definitely be this inside. And when they get up here to the top, they're going to cross over this little feeder stream into this area over here, which is a bench. And then off to a spot where they're going to find an oak grove, or perhaps there's ag off in that direction, or an apple tree, or whatever it may be that's a main food source. Can a deer drop down through here? and make it across? Absolutely. But is it going to do that? Probably not. 
this is a hundred feet of elevation switch right here just in this little section that is billy goat terrain and so unless a deer has to for survival purposes this area right here is not going to be traversed by a deer they're going to cross up here in the top where it's much easier and efficient to do so so this is the cow path that i was talking about and this is in just about every single bow tie formation i scouted and it's usually found up here on this bench between the two feeder streams one on this side one over here and if you set yourself up with the wind and thermals to your advantage you're going to put yourself in a lot of deer i will warn you that frequently i've found at least where i hunt there are a lot of big bucks that are just north of this spot farther up in the bench if you have a rock outcropping or mountain laurel or rhododendron or some kind of dense foliage in that area north of the cow path you're going to find some of your best bucks bedded there the other ones will be out here on the spur so make sure that you're playing the wind if you've got a west wind you might want to be setting up obviously on the far side of this cow path even farther off of the map than what is shown because you don't want your scent moving up this bench to the location of a big buck that's betting. The game's already over before you've started. Oftentimes, right smack dab in the middle of one of these ridges, you'll see a drop off. You go from mountain laurel there, and then just look how far down a buck can actually see. Any deer for that matter. But this is primo bedding area. So a buck's going to reside up here at the top. The wind will blow over his back. And he can watch down in front of him all day long. Nothing is going to sneak up on him. You absolutely will find big bucks using this cow path. Of course, as the season goes on and there's more pressure, they'll probably choose other routes that are less obvious. But this spot, the cow path, if you're not real picky about your buck, you just need a legal buck, or you are on doe patrol, this is your money location right here. And a third hunting tactic for these bow ties is to hunt the scrapes. Don't put yourself right over the scrape, but put yourself 25, perhaps 30 yards from that scrape. Of course, deer will make scrapes almost anywhere, but the real high quality scrape locations in these formations as I've scouted them and observed them over the last number of years are in these spots. This is a somewhat unique bow tie configuration because I've drawn in the stream here and these are the braids, one here, one over here on this side. And in the center here, there's not really water. It's more like a spring but it has created some erosion. And so you have almost two points on this bench up here. And so don't get confused by that. I'm going to draw the bedding in here on one of the spurs. Again, remember, a lot of times they'll actually bed where the transition takes place from the really steep terrain to the less steep terrain on these points. And because of that bedding, you're going to notice that oftentimes... The main artery or trail that comes up from these points goes something like this. It'll go around the very center of this spur. And then you'll have an intersection like this on either end. This will often go up into there. And where these intersections take place that's usually where you're going to find a really good scrape. My preference when it comes to hunting would be to target the scrape that's farther off the point, but you're going to have to do your own surveilling because it could be that a big buck doesn't want to come out here, especially if there's been a lot of pressure in that area. So he may actually be coming to this location, the scrape that's farther to the south, farther out the spur. And if that's the case, then you got to get creative because it's hard to get into that spot without having your cover blown scent wise. So again, you've got to do your own homework, figure out what's going on. This one's easier and less intrusive to hunt. So 
take that into consideration when you're thinking about your hunting setups. And then if we extend this trail through this bench over to the other spur, I'm just going to stop it there. There are a couple of preferences when it comes to deer and scrapes on the bench. Usually you'll find one somewhere in this vicinity. Again, remember that most of these bow ties don't have too many points off this bench. They just have the one, but this one is unique. So I'd expect there to be a predominant scrape on both of these points. And then usually there's one up above the main cow path that goes through here that I talked about earlier. Just a word on the preferred species of trees and shrubs that deer will scrape under. It's my anecdotal observation that from region to region, deer have their preferred species. And so you have to do your own research, do your own scouting in your area because different trees, different shrubs are preferred by deer. And a lot of this, I believe, has to do with what are the predominant species, what kind of ecosystem are you hunting in, a bunch of other factors that go into play. In Pennsylvania and New York, the properties that I have uh, the ability to hunt on, the American witch hazel tree, which is actually an understory tree or a large shrub in some cases, is the number one scraped under tree by far. It is true that there are medicinal properties in the oil that's found in the leaves and also in the bark. And so deer will gravitate to this species sometimes when they're sick. But when it comes to the rut, they absolutely love to scrape underneath American witch hazel. And so you'll see oftentimes licking branches and distinctive scrapes underneath the American witch hazel tree. I also have noticed that hemlock and also in big wood settings, especially American beech, are heavily used as scraping locations by deer. Now, where you're at, none of those or all of those may actually be highly scraped under trees. So do some scouting and try to figure that out for yourself because when you do, you can start noticing and predicting even where deer will have their scrapes. This is an especially effective strategy to hunt bow tie bucks during that period of time that's leading up to the rut, the pre-rut. So in my case in Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, in that area, that would probably be like the middle of October till the last week of October. You'll have to adjust that for wherever you're doing your hunting. One final thought. Each of these locations that I went to, well, they were all on public land. But if you're fortunate enough to have private land with this particular geologic formation on it, I highly recommend that just like everyone else, you make sure that you don't overhunt it. You want deer to feel secure on your property. So make sure that you wait for the right time of the year, the right weather pattern, some kind of surveillance that you know a specific buck is using a particular spot. And when you go in, be very decisive in what you're going to do. Act as though you have one hunt and only one hunt to get the job done. If it's not right, then don't go in. I'd love to hear your comments about your experiences in these kinds of formations. If you have them in your area, and have you ever shot a buck effectively in one of them? Until next time, I'm Darrell with Seeds to Dreams Deer. I hope that you find this season and beyond more than you think that you're hunting for.